How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. So today we're going to take a look at the Asus ROG Maximus Z690 Euro uh, that I actually already did on unboxing on if you guys want to see uh, that with all of everything that's inside and, and so on. We'll leave a link down in the description below. But for today we're going to pair it up with the newly released 12th generation Intel i7 12700K and see how it performs even against some of the previous i9s because it's quite a good cpu so stay tuned for that now before we get all into all of the benchmarks and everything let's quickly go over the board first now as for the differences between the new z690 compared to the previous z490 and 590 the biggest differences is that it now supports the brand new ddr5 memory and also pci express 5 as well which Possibly won't do anything necessarily for gamers, but it might actually be really useful for content creators like myself. But now probably the biggest difference is going to be the price point, as it is $100 more compared to the previous Z590 Hero at $500, which was already $100 more compared to the previous Z490 Hero. And as for here in South Africa, MSRP wise is going to be above 13,000 Rand, close to something probably around 15,000 Rand. So it's not going to be cheap, but it is a very high end board. But now if you wanted to see what's included alongside the motherboard in the box, you can again check out the link in the video description for the full on unboxing with some additional thoughts and so on on the board as well. But now taking a look at the design of the board, the Z690 Hero does look a bit different compared to the previous Z590 Hero. It does still have the all black design, but the IO cover now has more of a layered pixelated RGB design and some of the same design on the chipset heat spreader, but that one is not RGB instead of more of a, a silver glow on it. But it does still look a very clean to its own design and I actually do quite like it. And it's not as RGB and over the top as some other boards, but overall it still is a really good looking board and it, it's kind of clean in its own way. So I kind of like it. Now the new Z690 platform does feature the new LGA 1700 socket for Intel's new 12th generation Elder Lake CPUs. These new CPUs are built on Intel's 10 nanometer process and features the big little design of mixed core types for a power and also power saving and we are also going to see how it performs with of course the new 12700k a bit later as for the vrms it does feature a 2090 amp power stage which is around a 10 phase with a 10k black metallic capacitors and a microphone alloy chokes i don't exactly have the exact components and names but overclocking won't be an issue for this uh, as we will see now in my stress attacks with the is7 there were no issues at all keeping temperatures nice and cool averaging around 58 degrees in ida 64's stress test on the stock settings but even on overclocks it didn't really do much in attempts wise but as for the overclocking because i had very limited time with the board i couldn't spend too much time manually overclocking the 12700k so i opted to go for asus's ai overclocking features which has always worked really well without really needing to do anything you just press one click and and it does everything on its own. On a stock, the 12700K was able to turbo boost up to 5.1 gigahertz on all eight performance cores and 3.9 gigahertz on the four efficient cores, which is pretty outstanding compared to the 11900K, which was at around 5.1 gigahertz on its own. But now with the AI overclocking applied, I was easily able to get a 5.3 gigahertz on the performance cores and a four gigahertz on the efficient cores, which is still pretty crazy considering I just pressed a single button and it did everything on its own stable without any issues now moving on to memory the Euro supports a maximum of 128 gigs on its four dual channel dim slot but it's now DDR5 dims now with overclocking it does go up to 6400 megahertz which is kind of crazy and DDR5 even goes higher than that now there's one issue that we already experienced with a DDR5 it might be extremely fast but it's going to be very expensive and stock is going to be very 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 low so uh, you might want to opt for a different option and luckily you are going to get a ddr4 unfortunately the euro board will not feature a ddr4 version at the moment but some of uh, asus's 
the other boards does feature a DDR4 a version. Now it's unfortunately not that much cheaper really, but you will be able to save money on not needing to buy DDR5 memory, which currently isn't really a need case for gaming anyway. So uh, rather save your cash and just go for the DDR4 version for now, if you wanted to and if you can get stock. Now with the new DDR5 memory, it is also slightly a bit different compared to DDR4 with the PMISC, which has the voltage regulator on the memory module instead of the DIMM. So once more DDR5 memory is available and also higher speeds, we maxed out at 4,800 megahertz, unfortunately at the, at the moment. So once more DDR5 memory is available and also some of the DDR4 board versions is available, we might be able to do some testing comparing DDR4, DDR5 and just chipsets and, and so on also. So to see exactly how it compares. Now moving on towards the PCI Express slots, this is again where most of the bigger differences come into play with the full support for PCI Express 5 now, jumping from PCI Express 3 to PCI Express 4 and now PCI Express 5. The Euro does have three full size PCI Express slots with the top two being a PCI Express 5 16x times and the bottom one being PCI Express 5 are running on the chipset. Now the top two does feature a SUSE safe slot technology for better durability when installing your GPUs and also just help to prevent the GPU from sagging too much. But the coolest feature, and I think it is new to ASUS and to new from new ASUS boards, is the Q release button. This help releases the latch that does lock the GPU in place and prevent you from needing to try and squeeze your fingers in between your GPU and the M.2 or whatever there is, uh, or use a pen and squeeze that in there as well, where now you just need to press the button and it unlocks it and it just makes your life so much easier, especially if you do have a very compact case uh, where it just makes your life so, such a hassle to get your GPU out. Now it's not a problem anymore. Now moving on to storage, you do get the standard six SATA 3 ports on the side and then a three M.2 slots plus an additional two when you do use the included Hyper M.2 expansion card that is included that does a run at a full PCI Express for speed. So you do have a plenty of storage options here. And I do love that they do include that Hyper M.2 expansion card. But as for on the board itself, two of them are also PCI Express 4 and one of them at the bottom is only PCI Express 3. Three. But now something to keep in mind is that if the bottom PCI Express is running in, in, in SATA mode, then SATA 5 and 6 will be disabled. But now another awesome feature that ASUS is including in their boards, and it's not new on just this board, is their Q-latch design that prevents you from needing to actually use screws when securing your M.2s in place. All you need to do is insert your M.2 and then slide and lock the M.2 in a place. It's that simple and it really, it makes your life so much easier, especially if your system is already on your disk and you need to install a screw there. It's, it's, it's a hassle and this makes your life just so much easier. Now as for our I.O., you do get a clear CMOS button, a BIOS flashback button, a single HDMI full port, two USB 2.0 ports, one of them being for the BIOS update, and then seven USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 gigabit a second ports, one of them being a type C, and then very nice, you do get two Thunderbolt 4 type C ports for content creators, it's quite handy. Now you do also get a single 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, your Wi-Fi 6E plus a Bluetooth 5.2, a optical SPDIF out audio port, and then of course your standard 5 audio jacks with the Supreme FX ALC 4082 Kodak and also the two-way AI noise cancellation that ASUS added. Now as for the internal connectors, you do get a two 8-pin CPU power connectors at the top, your standard 24-pin motherboard power connector, your start button, your reset a button and then also your flex a key a button. Along with that you do get your Q LED indicators, your Q code, eight PWM connectors, a single thermal sensor header and then three addressable 5 volt LED RGB headers and a single 12 volt RGB LED header. Then two USB 3.2 Gen 1 type A 
uh, headers, two USB 2.0 headers, and then a USB uh, 3.2 Gen 2 X2 type a C header, but that also feature alongside with it, a six pin a PCI Express a power connector that does add a quick charging for a plus for your USB type C header and does support charging up to 60 watts of fast charging. And if your case does support it, uh, support a three amp ports, then you are able to use that 60 watt fast charging uh, for your, to charge your devices. Now, unfortunately your case does need to support that, but apparently some of the new cases will, and then also some of them will have a DIY upgrade that you can add uh, possibly uh, later. Now then finally getting into the benchmarks and previously we did review the 11 900k and i was kind of a bit disappointed last year it didn't perform necessarily that well and even though we currently don't have the 12 900k to compare it to i was still blown away by the performance increase of the i7 12 700k now for our testing we did compare it towards our 11 900k and also the 9900k f and in most of the gaming benchmarks there wasn't really that increase uh, compared to the i9s except for Rainbow Six Siege where we did see a slight increase in the performance but where we really saw the i7 12700K perform is when we did synthetic benchmarks and also productivity benchmarks and here it just destroyed the previous i9s. Now I'm not entirely sure if my Cinebench R23 was a broken but we did a multiple runs and it scored around 7,000 points more than the previous i9 11900K even overclocked. That 24,000 point score is just below the Ryzen 9 5950X from AMD and which is their, currently the top consumer grade CPU. And this is an i7. <laughs> now the thrashing continues in a Blender, 3D Mark, and also in the, the Corona benchmark, with it easily beating all of the previous i9s. Now again, unfortunately we didn't have any AMDs to compare it to, but from just from the other benchmarks we saw previously, it just does extremely, extremely well especially for an i7. <laughs> now, I will only know if my result is actually legitimate after everybody else's releases their benchmarks because uh, it just kind of blows me out of the water that it did that well. So I'm kind of a bit nervous. <laughs> Hopefully it is everything correct, but uh, I, I do expect it to be. But I also just think Intel is a finally back and back with a massive uh, bang, especially for content creators. Again, not so much for uh, gaming, uh, possibly later on we will see more and more uh, games, but for now, content creators is where that increase in performance is at. But now as for my final thoughts on the new Z690 Euro from ASUS, pricing wise it is a bit up there. Going $100 step up each uh, generation is a bit much, but I do understand there is a limited stock supply, is the supply chain issues and all of that. So that is also there and DDR5 and PCI Express 5 does also cost more. So it is going to be a bit higher price a board and most of the boards is going to be more expensive overall. So just keep that in mind. Now I do kind of feel that this board is overkill for the IS7. I'd rather go for something like the 12 900k instead if you are going for this board and i do still think this board is going to handle the i9 without any issues at all we just saw how it handled the i7 even without batting an eye at all so go for the i9 if you do want this board and just get that extra performance out now ddr5 it does look to be a really a nice uh, same goes for pisa express r5 but ddr5 is going to be very expensive and there's honestly not going to be a lot of stock available and it's only afterwards we're going to see the faster memory coming out so we'll have to see what happens there but currently i would rather say go for something like the ddr4 versions but again unfortunately this board does not have one of those also pc express 5 does look on paper to be quite good but gpus won't necessarily utilize that extra of double the bandwidth possibly we'll see some ssds or pc express card ssds come out in the near future for pc express 5 but other than that not really any increase in performance or necessary performance that you're going to see there but i do love that you do get that q release and also the q latch from asus that's just awesome to see on a board and just makes your life a bit easier it's not something massive but it just 
yeah, again, makes your life so much easier, and I honestly do like that. Now, the Thunderbolt ports for me was also a nice inclusion, having two of those. I do have an external Thunderbolt SSD, and that thing speeds, it's very useful. And if you do have ex uh, extra Thunderbolt uh, the external devices for content creators, then those will also be quite useful. And then finally, it's just going to be that quicker charging that you do get with the front the USB type C port that you can. Uh, depending on your case, if it does support that. Uh, but other than that, I don't have any complaints on this board. The AI overclocking was a dream to do. Just everything worked really, really well. And ASUS is a BIOS as well, always very simple to handle. So if you want to go into that more, you can, of course, and do some manual overclocking as well. Hopefully we'll be able to do that a bit later. But overall, this board is just a very good option to go for if you want to go for something like the i9 and possibly go for some lower versions if you want to go for the i7 or i5s. But anyway, a big shout out to Asus of Africa sending over the board, the, the RAM, the CPU, pretty much everything that we needed for this video. So a big shout out to them. And if you guys want to get either of the board or the CPU for yourself, I will leave links in the video description. Hopefully it's available by enough when you're watching this, but I will leave links down below. And if you guys enjoy this review, please like, share, subscribe and comment like always and i'll check all of you next time cheers guys